So hello and welcome back to the Living Legends podcast. I'm your host for today. My name's Az from Go Again Gaming across the pond from these guys here. Uh, but yeah, as always, joined by Bill and Kel. How are you guys? How are you guys doing? I'm good. Um, the pond is <laughs> the pond is large that separates us, but uh, it's but very I, large. Yes, but I'm uh, swim, I'm would doing you? pretty good. Yeah. Well, for me in particular, because I'm on like the other side of the country too, so it's like I have to cross the you know the continent, and then also <laughs> yeah. and then also the the the, the pond here. Anyway, I'm good. How are you doing? Uh, how you doing? Bill? I'm uh, I'm doing good. I'm actually joining you guys from uh, out at the lake. I'm uh, I'm what? at my my friend's cabin. Yeah. No, more ponds. Really? More ponds. Yeah. There's an additional pond. <laughs> wow. Uh, that's cool. I actually didn't oh, know that. Really? So that's pretty. No, sweet. I didn't know that either. Yeah. How, how is the, as always? How, keep me down. <laughs> how is the internet at the at the at the lake? Uh, it's pretty good. I'm actually just using uh, my phone as a hotspot, which I think is the first time that I've ever um, done that before. But nice seems to be working just fine. Pretty good. Yeah, it's nothing. Yeah. That we, we, we wouldn't have thought that that would be the case using the middle of a cabin with a lake outside. So hope you're loving life, Bill. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's it's going it's going pretty well so far. I actually have uh, this is one of two trips that I'm going to be taking uh, this week because next week I'm actually uh, going out to visit uh, BC. Oh, as in my, uh, my neck of the woods. Flying over to Victoria. Yeah. Not, I mean, oh. Victoria is a little north from me, but still uh, Pacific. Yeah, you know? like approximate, you know. <laughs> yeah. Closer than closer than as. Is this a, far yeah. away from us temporarily? <laughs> yeah, it, I know this is a, already a significant tangent, but is this oh, the yeah, kind of good. like cabin trip where you like you go to the cabin, but you're really just like still playing cards, like just you know in the know. cabin, just playing video games and cards? Are you are you are you doing like um, outdoorsy things like fishing and whatnot? Oh no, yeah, it's it's all indoors stuff uh, at this point. I think at at awesome. some point it's supposed to be raining, so we we kind of prepped for just a. Uh, um just a like quiet weekend out in the middle of nowhere um oh, yeah. but it hasn't started raining yet i think the next uh like update to the forecast was that it's like an hour and a half from now i think it was supposed to start sometime this morning uh and it's about 1 30 where i am right now and it still hasn't rained so hopefully it keeps on that way but if it does rain then i mean again we were kind of prepared for it i'll you take stuff to do i'll take your rain <laughs> yeah. i'll take it it's like blistering yeah. hot here in Oregon. Mm -hmm. It's like it's supposed to be like over a hundred in a couple days, which is like Ow. I know there's always people who are like, oh I live in Arizona and it's always a hundred. Yeah, I live in Oregon and it's not a hundred. <laughs> it's like yeah it's supposed to be like wet and rainy, not like mm -hmm. you know blistering hot. So I'll yeah. take I'll take your rain. I'll take it. Exactly. And while we're on the while we're on the subject of you know wild tangents and weather and all that sort of thing, it's the same here as well. Like the UK has had probably yeah, I think they, it set a record the other day for the hottest day ever. It was like forty degrees in the UK, which is just global warming at its best. People. Yeah. Um, uh, I can. <laughs> so yeah, man, I, I'm with you. Yeah. So it's it's not it's not pleasant. I mean, I, I enjoy hot weather, but you know, it's the Britain in, in general is just not geared up for it. We don't have air conditioning on our houses or, you know, big units in the corner, which is spewing out nice cold air. We have none of that. You know, it's like when we get snow, like we just don't know how to deal with it. I mean, I imagine Canada know how to deal with snow um, yeah. to, a, to a certain degree, but... I can, um, yeah. I can I can relate a lot because Oregon is the exact same way. Everyone's like, mm. yeah, it doesn't get hot in Oregon. So most places don't have air conditioning. When we were looking uh, to move yeah. to a new house, it was so hard to find a place that had AC. Our, our place doesn't have AC right now. So it's like, mm. you know, over 100 something degrees. And I'm just very fortunate that I bought um, a little like window unit. Like it's, it's, not, it's like a portable one, right? It's not in the window. It's like there's like a hose. But and it goes uh, out the window. Yeah, the hose goes out the window, sort of thing. Push yeah. the hot air out. Yeah, it's like yeah, this. Yeah. It's like this eight hundred dollar Toshiba one that I bought um, from like a, you know, a, you know, warehouse store or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah. that's like the best purchase I've ever made because it's been so freaking hot <laughs> recently. So. Yeah. yeah. Throw, Speaking of hot, we're obviously going to go into a lot of the law surrounding Volcor and what have you today, and obviously the uprising mm -hmm. and the rebellion and all that sort of thing. Yeah. So that's on that's on the docket for today. Speaking of hot weather and fiery environments, uh, that's going to be what we're going to be exploring today. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, we're, we're a flesh and blood podcast, right? That's right. Yeah, I thought I'd try and sort of 
steer the ship a little <laughs> bit. Although this is going to be it's going to be a bit of a loose one uh, because let, let's be honest, you know, Flesh and Blood is not one of those games that has stuff going on all the time. So this is where the Living Legends podcast shines in the fact that you can just find solace in the random stuff sometimes. That's what we're doing today, especially when I'm the host. You know, it's very loosey goosey, baby. <laughs> loosey goosey. We got we, we got a, we got a bit of lore. We got we got some news. We got some stuff to talk about. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. But before we go into that, um, I just want to go through our week in Flesh and Blood. If we do have uh, some stuff we do want to talk about, I definitely do have some stuff that I want to talk about. So I'll kick this off if that's okay. Yeah, man. Uh, and this is just a nice little place for people that are tuning in, wherever you might be out there, to know what we are doing separately, uh, whether that's on our channels or stuff that we are experiencing um, just in in the game in general. This is where we where we sort of share that. Um, so for me, um, Kel can uh, sort of uh, attest to this. We literally just filmed the uh, the next episode of the Azalea Cult. So this is the Azalea Cult two. Yeah, um, uh, that was quite uh, good fun. A uh, lot of engagement on that on that video as well for the competition. So I look forward to releasing that. And that was all about the bows that Ranger can use, as well as some uh, some awesome and some funny design ideas from the community. <laughs> yeah, there's some uh, ridiculous massive, stuff in there. Yeah, some absolute walls of text. And there are also card mock-ups as well. One of them was a Magic the Gathering card, which was funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's, like, um, templated like a overwrought Magic the Gathering card, too. It is, yeah, like a legendary equipment or something. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, yeah, Azalea Cult 2, look out for that. And, obviously, I've started editing the UPF 4 game, which was probably the funnest and most interesting game we've had of Ultimate Pit Fight so far because of the fact we changed the rules for it. So um, that's all to come as well on uh, a lot of the uh, well, mine and uh, mine and Kel's channel as well as Stevens as well uh, for the Ultimate Pit Fight number four. I can't believe we've done four of them already. Well, we did do five, but one of them didn't make it, <laughs> and that's yeah. typically the typically the one that Bill won, unfortunately. <laughs> as a guy. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> I forgot about so, that one. Uh, I don't even remember who I played in that one. Who did I even play? I don't remember. I was, I was playing, playing Reinhardt. Maxi. Yeah, I think, yeah, maybe, yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't remember either. I just kept forgetting to roll scab skins. Oh, um, yeah. It was like I literally acquired a scab skins recently because I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do Reinhardt deck. I'm going to go all over the brute train. And then I can't even remember to roll the scab skins for my turn. Um, it's like it's like a, a, brute, a brute sort of equivalent to forgetting to do your tunic trigger. Um, I was like, oh, no, I forgot to roll my scab skins. <laughs> what, am I, what am I doing? Um, but, um, yeah, a few, a few cool things that are happening uh, on um, on my end as well as all of our ends because, obviously, the UPF involves all of us, and it will continue to do that going forward. Uh, I know we've had a lot of people, like I think Ian as well, uh, left us a, uh, a question last week that we forgot to cover, and he said, why does your UPF group keep dodging me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that's exact that's uh, exactly what we're doing. We're, we're dodging him on purpose. We're like, nah. Dodging dodging Ian Kenderdine on purpose. Um but no, I think I think eventually, maybe next year, you know, if we are still doing it, uh we probably will be at some you know, I, I imagine maybe we can start thinking of guests to replace one of us, um, you know, going forward. But I I, I don't know. I don't know yet. But it's you know, a, it could be it's a tricky thing, right? Because like we could yeah. have like another guest on and have like five people, but then as has to edit five people, five people, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so I think a lot of it comes down to that, right? Like mm. not having to put more, you know, work into it. And like four is a good good number too. So I think like for guests, I think it's gonna be like as said, like um, it might be more of a you know less regular like a thing. Seasonal thing. Well, yeah, yeah, like if, if say if like one of us is unavailable, then we can get a guest or something like that. I think I think it, play it by ear. Yeah. I think is better. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, I mean, hopefully we can open it up to different members of the community in the future. But uh, we are not dodging you, Ian. We promise. It is just a convenience thing at the moment because that that would also mean like three different time zones involved as well. Yeah. And we all know we all know how hard that is because of obviously we've got we've got something on the back burner, which we may have mentioned before, the Dungeons and Dragons thing that we tend to do. Mm. Yeah. Um, but that's very much a, uh, a widespread, uh, you know, party of people. And that's always hard to do, like to organize it. So we're not dodging you in. It's just logistics most of the time. Um, so I don't know where I was going with that, but someone else, weak, weak in flesh and blood. 
Okay, I'll, I'll just go. I'll, I'll break the silence. Let's do it. Okay, so um, do it. Yeah. Uh, my week's really simple. Um, it's just the you know business as usual, just content. I have finally put together some um, uh, uprising decks, and by uprising decks, I mean uh, decks using uprising heroes. So I built Phi in Classic Constructed using Tarek Patel's list, and then yeah. I put together um, a Icelander Blitz. Uh, deck that was featured on the Spark of Genius YouTube channel. Um, and right. the deck was by, um, oh, I forget his real name, but it's Kadachi for one on Twitter. So, uh, really cool Icelander list, pun definitely intended. Um, and I'm, you know, looking forward to playing that and uh, jamming some like uh, good, good, fine ninja stuff going forward. That, that's basically what I've been doing for, for Flesh and Blood this week. Yeah. Um, how about, how about you, Bill? I unfortunately haven't gotten up to a whole lot this past week, um, although I am inching ever closer to having my full uh, collector set of Uprising complete. Um, what what do you I'm, need? What do you need? Uh, I need to upgrade my blood from uh, Rainbow Foil to Cold Foil. I need the Angry Ashwing. Yep. I need uh, Tomaltai Marvel. And I think I need two extended art, um, stoke the flames and two flame call awakenings. Okay. And I think that's it. Um, it's pretty good. I, yeah, I was able to put it in order a little while ago and I was able to upgrade my crown of Providence to cold foil. Ooh. I got the three, uh, Marvel Phoenix flames and three, um extended art uh phoenix forms oh mm -hmm. nice i'm i'm, I'm kind so, of like janking it up well sort of mid janking it with my <laughs> phoenix flames because i have two extent or two of the yeah the extended art promo rainbow foil ones and then i also have the extended art cold foil marvel version <laughs> so i'm using two rainbow foil <laughs> and one cold foil um yeah well yeah obviously then the cold foil is the one that starts uh in the graveyard <laughs> exactly <Yeah>. exactly <laughs> So extra flex, you can be like, yeah, my cold falls in the graveyard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't even, <laughs> it's like, oh, I don't even need it. And then you start the game and you're like, actually, I do need it. And put it back in my hand. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I need it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm, cool. uh, I'm really excited about that. It's, it's coming along relatively nicely. And uh, a lot of the stuff I was able to pull myself and then other stuff I was either able to source locally or this last thing was actually from uh, a game store over in uh, Quebec, actually. Mm. Shout out God's Arena for helping me out uh, with a significant portion of the remainder of things that I had to collect. So nice. Um, nice. Yeah. Yeah, we'd have to, uh, after this, send me a list of what you need, because I think I remember pulling full art extended stuff, which I'm never going to really collect. So if I have those, I can just give give those to you. Um, so I think I remember pulling some, yeah, I think I remember, they're, they're similar, to the, similar to the Everfest ones, aren't they? The full art extended ones. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so uh, I might have a look for you. Um Cool. So uh, apart from that, yeah, I mean, uh, we got a couple of topics. We got the law, which we'll go into in a moment. But one of the other main articles that came out recently was the fact that uh, uh, Legend Choice Studios are partner partnering with PCG for um, their card grading. Uh, so mm -hmm. this will ensure that uh, Flesh and Blood's coveted prize cards are truly are the gold standard. Uh, so what do we think of this? Um, PCG is coming out of New Zealand as well, isn't it? I it's kind of hilarious that there's even a little bit of controversy around this because i saw it and i'm just like yeah cool yeah, a little... like i'm just like <laughs> i'm like yeah sure like i even i think i commented on matt rogers tweet about it i'm like i'm like this didn't surprise me at all because i think it just makes a ton of sense especially since mm -hmm. you know pcg is owned by matt rogers who is a well-known flesh and blood player and uh from new zealand and i'm like of course they're going to partner with you know a new zealand company and mm -hmm. um yeah, I was like, you know, I'm probably never going to win one of these things. So, you know, uh, yeah, <laughs> no, no, that doesn't really affect me all that much. And if they want to like, you know, they said they're going to like destroy all the ones that don't grade PCG 9.5 or higher. I'm um, like, if they just want to just destroy all their stuff, go, go for it. No one's going to get those cards anyway. So I was just like, yeah, you know, yeah, I guess we should so probably probably say what the 
what the what the whole spiel is on this actually. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so it's obviously part a partnership with Premier Card Grading, which is uh, obviously New Zealand. Um, so, starting from the calling in Singapore, this is between August twenty twentieth uh, and twenty first. All gold cold foil prize cards will be PCG raw grade authenticated nine plus. Moving forward, this will expand to also include cold uh, gold cold foil prize cards awarded through programs such as ProQuest, Battle Hardened, and National Championships. Yep. Uh, and it says uh, for the creme de la creme, beginning uh, being the calling champion prize card, currently crown of confidence, crown of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> After ready uh, slip, absolutely crown of confidence, full art, and pro tour champion prize cards. These will be fully graded and slabbed at PCG nine point five or better. All copies of these cards that grade less uh, than PCG nine point five will be destroyed, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah, so I think be... two two like kind of important things about this. One is that. Only for the calling champion prize, that's the that's the one that's going to get slabbed, and that's going to be mm -hmm. nine point five or higher, and then the remainder will be destroyed. For the other ones, for like the calling, uh, pro quest, battle harden, and national championships, um, those are just raw grade authenticated nine point five plus, which they're not going to be slabbed, like the yeah. uh, the other one. Yeah, I think so. You can I think still treat them like a regular card. Um... Like yeah. they're they're not going to be sealed away in the in the case. It's just making sure that, you know, I've seen a bunch of people. Um, in fact, I think there was one person I, ca I can't remember what his name was, but he got a gold cold foil mask and uh, made a YouTube video about it. He was like the first person to hit a thousand XP in oh, okay. Europe or something. And oh, uh, he made a YouTube video about it. And he was like, yeah, I have it in the the like the sealed pack still. But he wanted to open it to show people like what it looks like in person because he's like, yeah, people probably haven't seen these before. And yeah, it had like a ding on the top corner. And he's like, yeah, I got this for like an achievement. And it kind of feels bad that it's damaged. Like I didn't even do anything to it. Yeah. And so ultimately, like it doesn't mean that like it's even less of an issue, I think, than the tunic stuff, because it's not even that there isn't going to be supply of these. They're going to be exactly the same. They're still going to print enough to give out as prizes, um, but they're just making sure that you don't get one that has like a chip in the bottom of it, or <laughs> yeah. like, that it has a scratch all along the back. Like it's I don't know. I think it's just them wanting to make sure that when people win something, it's not like <laughs> folded in half. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like a quality assurance thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I literally don't see a problem with it, with this at all. It's just like, hey, we're gonna make our sure our cards don't suck, um, and then for the um, you know, the pro tour champion and calling champion stuff, like here you go, you you have uh, what you know is tantamount to like a a really nice trophy in addition to your actual trophy. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think one of the main I think one of the main the main sort of um controversies or things about it was like what why why are the cards being given to us in that state anyway why are they not why are they not fresh from the start sort of thing uh, I think mm -hmm. that was one of the one of the main sort of um things about it but you could say you could say the same about any card game but any prize like what why is it what why is it not give, being given to us in the most pristine condition from the off yeah yeah, Again, and uh, like yeah. I, I think I saw a few people um, equating this to, you know, not necessarily sucking up to the market and the secondary uh, value of the cards, but, you know, something mm. very similar. And uh, like, again, I don't think it's it's not changing the availability of these cards. It's just making sure that when you get one, it's it looks nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's literally yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So nice. I think it's. Totally fine. And actually, I don't know, maybe kind of noble for LSS to go that one extra step and have it, you know, looked at by a grading service. Like, they're not charging the end user anything for this. It just nice. is now we're making sure that your, your card looks good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Lots of downsides, right? <laughs> they're, yeah. They're, they're literally, I don't think there is one. It's just... No. Just the internet. <laughs> feels like people are getting angry for no reason again. So, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, no, that's, yeah. that's never happened. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. um but yeah so that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it obviously it's a good thing obviously it just means obviously your your cards that you get given you know as a trophy as an achievement come in the most pristine condition um so yeah you know i don't know what people are on about with regards to downsides you know it's, 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 it's a definitely a good thing um yeah but um 
But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much like the only sort of company news with regards to that, partnerships and stuff. The rest of the sort of spice um, of this particular podcast is the fact that we got given some law for both Dramai and Fi. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And obviously we go into uh, go into their stories a little bit um, and, uh, and experience what, you know, they're all about. So uh, we've got, should we go through the Dromai one first? A little I, bit of the Dromai one? I think we should start or, with... Phi, because Phi kind of sets up the Dromai story. Mm, cool. Yeah. Um, do we want to do, like, this is our first time we're doing um, lore. Do we want to, like, summarize it, and then we can give our thoughts on the uh, on the actual story? By the way, but if you're listening to this, um, you should go and just read them. They're, they're both pretty short, and if yeah. you can't find the actual articles, just go to the hero page on the official Flesh and Blood website, um, and... Under Heroes of Fab, you can just click uh, Fi and Dromai, and the uh, the lore is on that page. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, you should go go read it for yourself. It's pretty pretty quick. Um, yeah, exactly. Like li- literally with with any character. I mean, m- most of the characters will have you know a nice little story section that you can read through, and that's what got me into the game ages ago. Was just going through the characters that were there at the time, um, and just reading what they're all about, and sort of relating to that from you know coming from previous games or video games, just you know finding the character that resonates with you the most. So the fact that they're doing this as more of an ongoing thing, which we'll obviously touch upon, is also decent. You can follow these characters through their journeys as time goes on. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I do like what they're doing with it. Uh, but yeah, if we start with uh, with Fi then, um, obviously at the start of the the law here, he's speaking to Yoon, which I believe is like the silver haired lady that we saw very very uh, early on. I think for the uprising art, I think that's the lady, isn't it? The one with the two swords. Yeah, yeah. from um, Rise from the Ashes, potentially. Mm. Yeah, that's it. yeah, Rise from the Ashes. She's a she's a. A little bad cop uh, to Fi's good cop, I think, in this story. Um, <laughs> she's she's a cool character. It's really interesting that she has silver hair, by the way. I just want to point that out because a yeah. lot a lot of the um, Drakai and Volkai have like black hair, um, mm. and if you don't know, the Drakai are kind of like the more uh, elite imperial uh, folks, and then the the Volkai are like the common folks uh, for Volkor. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. having silver hair is. Um, Pretty unique. Uh, I don't know how significant that's going to be, but it's just a th- something to think about. Yeah, it's a nice little sort of you know little thing to you know to to, to sort of speculate about is is she from Volcor? Is she from Mysteria? Where is she from? Silver hair lady. I want to know. Well, yeah, if she has <laughs> silver hair, I I don't know. Icelander. Well, I was Icelander say, has I, silver hair. <laughs> Icelander didn't start with silver hair though. She had black hair and then it turned silver. Um, oh. But yeah, and being I, in the bleak expanse too long. Yeah, because if <laughs> yeah, you look at like, if you look um, at uh, her um, token uh, young hero, she has like black hair that's kind of starting to turn into silver. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like um, Elsa from Frozen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> nice. Uh, um, but yeah, I think it starts with uh, obviously yes, they're speaking and they and they come to the decision that they have to capture a general a general Riku. Um, and uh, it starts from there, doesn't it? They want they want to try and capture one of the generals from uh, the the, the Volkai army, not Volkai, the Drakai army. Yeah, they they're setting up a trap. So they had already captured this um, very wealthy uh, merchant uh, woman, and they're mm. basically setting up a trap for the um, Drakai army. Nice. And it says, oh, that's a nice little bit here as well that sort of explains that. It says, uh, they wait and watch as Riku's army spreads like tar across the fields and farms. The soldiers settle in, occupying key positions as they prepare for an assault from within. Fi waits until they are comfortable, compromised, and lights the bonfire. So the fact that all of these sort of Sintari disguises and allies turning up and sort of springing the trap, as you say, the trap on this army, I think is quite cool. Because yeah. they're, they're just pure ambush them all, which is I- awesome. I think one point uh, about just the lore in general is that um, they they're disguised as Centauri, you know, like Kasai is a Centauri uh, cell sword. So they're disguised yeah. as mercenaries, and it's just kind of mentioned quickly that the mercenaries typically have allegiance with the uh, Drakai because, um, mm. like, they just walked in. They're like, "Oh yeah, these are just our allies." So uh, just a little bit of interesting lore about uh, where allegiances are. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, and then it goes on about. Um... Oh, where is it going about now? I think I don't. I don't think I've uh, actually 
put this in the in the doc document. So uh... they basically um, just uh, lie in wait, and then they spring their trap. So they, you know, they kind of like, you know, like, haha, we're actually rebels. You know, they pull pull their centauri cloaks aside, and then um, you know, a, a massive battle ensues. Um, over the course of the battle, um, there's a bit of like back and forth, and you know, um, you hear Yoon be like, you know, call call the people like the commoners who are running away cowards. Like she's a little yeah. rough. Like Yoon's a little, like I said, like the bad cop to Fi's good good cop. Bit um, stirrer, yeah, yeah. Um, they, they oh, talk yeah, and then Fi has a little little battle, doesn't he? With um, well, before he before he captures Riku, he has a battle with like his bodyguard or something. And then he slams into him and it, they call him like a, like a, like a char bear or something like that. Wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, which is also cool. I want to see some char bears. So apparently char bears yeah. are a thing. And I just imagine they're just like big lava bear type creatures. So char bear. Yeah. 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 I, I, do, I do love how they like drip a little bit of lore here and there. I mean, obviously this is a lore article, but they drip like flavor uh, into it, which mm. I think is, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, I mean, it's on, like on the Aria one as well, the Aria sort of section on the website, it gives you like uh, sort of animals or creatures that can be found in that area. Um, so who knows, you might, we might actually get to know what a char bear is in the future, but it's definitely not something yeah. you probably want to hug at night. It's, you know, it could be a hot hot water bottle equivalent, I guess, but you know, as long as you're... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so he basically like springboards off of the... Uh, off of this giant char bear man. No, he's not actually yeah. a char bear, but he's a giant, giant dude. Um, yeah. Lands on uh, General Riku's horse and then holds him at, uh, you know, hostage basically. And then they capture him. And um, yeah, that, that's kind of like the, the end of the battle. I think the general vibe of the battle has to do with like um, valor. They, they talk about it a lot. Like, uh, um, mm. let's see if I can. Yeah. Like, Yoon is like, she calls like the people running away, uh, cowards, but, um, Fi thinks of like his mother's words is like bravery is in the belief. And that's kind of like the, the, the tone of this in particular about like valor and bravery and, uh, you know, you know, trying to stand up for the, the people here. Um, yeah, exactly. And then it says uh, another sort of quote from Fi's mother as well is, uh, courage is born when choices die. So when you've got no other choice, you've only got one path to take. That's when courage is born, because that's what you have to get through as an individual. You, there's, no, there's no other option. You have to just go that way. Um, so, yeah, that definitely sort of fits into the theme of what they're doing there. Um, albeit we've mm -hmm. skipped, skimmed over this, we summarized it a little bit here. But, yeah, there's definitely themes of that in there, which is good. Yeah. And I, I a very important character that they mentioned a few times that will also... Uh, see mentioned in the Dromai lore is um, Fai's mother. Um, mm. She comes up multiple times um, as this um, traitor to the Drakai, right? Um, and uh, she's yeah. like this well known, I don't know if well regarded is the right word, but well known <laughs> infamous person um, mm. among the uh, among the Drakai. So um, yeah. you know, seen as a you know uh, rabble rouser, a, uh, um, you know, rebel leader, essentially. Yeah. I think that goes on to the, goes on to say, uh, again, about the traitor aspect, uh, of the, of the mother in Dramai's section as yep. well. Yep. Yep. Um, it, it, it's like interesting that the perspectives here, cause like we have the, the one about Fi in there, like talking about her, how she like, you know, you know, helped give, um, you know, uh, what's, what's the right word? Like, bravery to the people and then from the drakai perspective she's like this dirty traitor that you know ran into the, <laughs> the woods you know yeah that's what i mean it's like you know they're like villains in people's stories in general are just people with different points of view 100%. you know it's, yeah. so you know it's just like the, if they are doing that perspective I, mean, I haven't read for it you know massively but yeah if that if, if they are sort of doing that angle as well that is nice that's that's good that's good storytelling like perspectives yeah. Um, one one other thing that happens at the end is, um, I I like how they characterize Fi. So he like actually helps like clean up the bodies and perform burial rites or last rites, I should say. Um, yeah. 
So he's like definitely like a man of the people. Like he's helping the people. He doesn't see himself as like above them. He's like, you know, helping clean up after the battle. I mean, even even his quote when he like held the general prisoner, he's like, "I'm willing to die for my people." Are you? So like, they're they're definitely mm-hmm. characterizing Fi as like you know, like I said, man man of the people. And at the at the very end, um, he hears like screaming from the hilltop, and then he like rushes to the the hilltop. He like even bumps into a lady, and he. They specifically made that he had, like, you know, hastily apologized to the lady that he bumped into. Once again, characterizing him as, like, this kind of, like, yeah, yeah. you know, good for the people kind of guy. Um, and then he goes up and sees that uh, Yoon, our silver-haired ninja lady, has murdered the merchant. Um, not only murdered, tortured and murdered the merchant that they had uh, captured previously. Mm. Um, and in that, uh, they find that uh, she had given the names... Um, and homes of the Drakai that um, the merchant had taken interest in. And one of the names is uh, Dromai, which is, quote, the name is a slap to Fi's face. His scars burn <laughs> hot in his flesh. Um, hmm. So clearly there's some history between Fi and Dromai that we'll see, we'll, we'll see a little bit more about in the Dromai story. But um, yeah, I think definitely. They did, they did a pretty good job here, like, characterizing Fi, like, the kind of character he is. Um, and, like, they, they juxtaposed it with this, like, ruthless um, silver-haired ninja Yoon, where she's just, like, you know, ruthless. Pure cold-blooded. Yeah. yeah. She just freaking tortures and kills this lady. Um, and yeah. Fi's like, no, what are you doing? This is not how we operate. This is not how you start um, a revolution. <laughs> No. And, she, and she's like, nah, we're going to start it with blood. And she, like, guts the lady. By Proper time. unhinged. But, yeah, I mean, you know, on the website as well, this, obviously, the article is Fi, um, Fire's Rebellion. Uh, you can see, like, there's a few pictures as well. And right at the bottom, as you're explaining there, there is a picture of her just, like, literally reading a document with this dead person with, like, blood coming off of the sword. She's, like, doesn't doesn't care what's going on sort of thing. And then uh, on the other side of the image, there's Fi, he's, like, got his eyes closed, and he's, like, what is this What is this woman doing? Why am I associating with this? Um, so, uh, so yeah, another nice little, nice little parallel uh, there as well between the two of them. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, then we go on to Dramai's story. Yep. Um, so, if I just bring this up as well so this one is called uh dragon's empire yep Dra- dragons um, of empire dragons of empire mm-hmm. is it um and how does this one start because you know this is that this is just literally it starts off just dramai laying siege to somewhere um yeah which is a uh what's well, a sand folk establishment isn't it do you know what the sand folk are it's funny they they, they call sand they call the people sand folk um, as a proper noun, so they capitalize the mm-hmm. word sand folk. So yeah. um, it's definitely like a certain you know sect of people in mm. the um, in the desert here because they also mentioned that they looked back um, in the distance at Mount Volcor. So this is not taking place near Mount Volcor or the um, or the palace. This is like you know in the deserts, right? Yeah. Um, and. Nice. Uh, that's where this that's where this initially takes place. So Dr- Dromai has battles in a couple different places in this mm-hmm. uh, in this story, and the first one is like this um, sand fortress, and it's super interesting because um, they characterize the like the walls of sandstone as though they were made by like illusion magic, and yeah. they go on to to say that basically a lot of these folks are illusionists, which I found was super interesting. Um, yeah. because I had thought illusionists were more, uh, unique, but no, nah, there's like a whole like tribe of like these sand illusionists. And, but instead of like, you know, summoning dragons, like, um, Dromai does, they, they summon like giant sand tornadoes and twisters. And, you know, it, it kind of makes me think of that scene from the mummy where the, the giant face <laughs> appears in the sand, you know? <laughs> They're, they're all Brendan Brendan Fraser's in his aeroplane, like shooting bullets at it, like as if it's going to hurt, and he's just like. <laughs> <laughs> it, except for Brendan Fraser, it's like Vincerica, right? Yeah. And then it just eats. Yeah. It just eats him. Um, so that yeah. doesn't actually happen, but Vincerica does get absolutely wrecked. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm bearing the lead, but Dromai does not win this fight, even though her dragons are um, tearing 
Terran face here. She actually uh, yeah. summons Vincerakai, Asvali, and Necria for this uh, particular encounter. And there's some awesome text as well, like, um, you know, which is just an amazing description in tandem with the actual card mechanics as well. Uh, and it's like this, 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 this line that says, Necria shakes free of a charred corpse pile, a lithe monstrosity hanging from a loathsome cocoon. Uh, yeah. Which is just sort of, you know, it's like it's explaining the card as well. Like every time she deals damage or takes damage, if I remember correctly, you know, little bits of ash drop off of her. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's just the fact that they're sort of, you know, encapsulating that in the actual story and describing the actual card and what it does in lore, I think is nice. Um, and it's the same with your favorite card as well, Bill. Vin Serakai smashes through Sansone like a boulder propelled from a volcano. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was just reading that one and I was like, yeah, that's exactly what I think of when I attack somebody <laughs> with a Vincerica. <laughs> your glass cannon just flying in. Yeah, um, push the card towards your opponent and it's just... <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so so this is a battle between uh, Dramai and the and the Sand Folk. I imagine this is some sort of skirmish, or is there is there a, is there a, like a like a point for this so battle? Kel, it, or? it looks like the Drakai have been assaulting this uh, fortress for a while. They make it seem like that this is kind of like something that's been going on. They're sieging the fortress, but it looks like the sand folk are actually putting up good defenses. Um, yeah. The, uh, there's a couple interesting things um, about this siege in particular. Um, the two main characters for this are Dromai and then a, a Drakai lieutenant, I think he's a lieutenant, named Zathri. And yeah. he he kind of gives both words of encouragement and talks down to Dromai a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. um, when she's winning, he's like, oh, you honor your father's memory. And I think that part's kind of important, that he specifically mentioned her father's memory. Because we're going to talk yeah. about her mother a little bit later. But mm -hmm. um, Dromai's mother and father uh, come from different places. So, like, her father is Drakai, and her mother is uh, Volkai. And um, that that's kind of like another big big part of this. Um, mm -hmm. She also says, um, so th th I really like this interaction. She says, uh, we should have brought you here from the beginning, says Zathri. You're, you honor your father's memory. And then Dromai responds, Torvai, uh, Torvai was betrayed by love, answers Dromai. I have no such weakness. Um, so we can glean mm. from that that Torvai um, is the name of her father. And she believes that, or at least to some degree, that he was betrayed by love, which probably refers to uh, her mother. Um, yep. And that she's kind of, like, buried a lot of these feelings, or at least is attempting to do so. We'll see that that's not um, entirely successful a little bit later, but, um, mm. yeah, that, that's kind of, like, the framework here. So Dromai is, like, le you know, um, sieging these uh, sand folk. And there's some, like you said, there's some good, good imagery <laughs> here. Um, for a moment... Uh, oh, so so another part I want to say, um, the uh, Zathri, who actually is a spy master, I said lieutenant, uh, he's, he's a spy master. Um, yeah. He says, no sentiment for your mother's own people, wonders the Drakai mm -hmm. spy master. And then she says, the woman who left me with traitors, never. And so, once again, this is kind of like characterizing uh, um, Dromai's mother as, um, you know, a traitor. Being a traitor, yeah. She, she's part of the, the sand folk. Um, and, uh, she's, she's kind of like, you know, against, how should I say this? Cast aside that part of herself, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Um, hmm. another thing that's interesting is, um, is she says, as if her thoughts, oh, wait, let me, let me read this right. As if her thought is a summons, Sani shimmers into existence before Dromai startle eyes. And so from this, we can gleam that, uh, Sani is the name of uh, Dromai's mother, um, which mm -hmm. I, I I don't think they name her anywhere else in either of these stories. No, um, I don't think so. And then she's like um, startled by this, and uh, Zathri is like, "Yo, is something wrong," and she's like, "You don't see her," um, and because of this lack of focus, um, it causes Dromai's uh, <laughs> dragons to get absolutely wrecked. <laughs> basically. Rinsed, basically. Yeah. Um, Vincerakai is torn limb from limb by a tornado, and then Sani vanishes, a mirage summoned by the enemy to distract Dromai. 
She tries to rein in her remaining dragons, but it's too late. A twister leaves Asvali limp and broken. Another swallows Necria bone by bone. Um, oh, so they're dragon. yeah, they're they're as fragile as they are uh, in in the game as well. Yeah, um, and then exactly. Zathri kind of like, you know, you know, uh, throws some shade and says, "I spoke too soon. Perhaps you are the pathetic half blood they say you are." Um, yeah, and so that's. A lot of, uh, I think, I think this bit in particular also characterizes Dromai quite a bit, is that she is, you know, with the, she's with the Drakai, but she's a half blood, and you know, looked down upon by other Drakais who are, you know, not that. Um, yeah, it always feels like she has to has to do extra to sort of win their approval potentially as well. Like she says here, she Dromai forces herself to watch the army's withdrawal to see this failure into her memory with a white hot brand. So yeah. you know she's almost like sort of, you know, harming herself because she hasn't lived up to the expectation of of sieging the sand fort or whatever it is. Yep, and at, um, the, at this point she's not actually a drakai. It, it even says like if she is to become a drakai, she must never turn from shame. So mm. um, yeah, yeah. Do you want me to continue summarizing it? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah, it looks like you're uh, doing better than me. So, well, no, <laughs> you're doing all right, man. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I can just keep going. I, I, I liked. I think I like the Dromai story a little bit more than the the the, the five stone story. Um, yeah. But also, I just like Dromai, they, I just like Dromai more anyway. So I don't know. Oh yeah, so much better. Um, but then they um they, they go into um. The they give her a mission, don't they, to capture the uh, the well, no, save the captured general that Fi captured earlier in the last story. Yeah, they? yeah, they're hanging out at a place called Ashvahan, which yeah. um, I believe is just like a, a very large um, city in the in the you know the Ash Desert, and yeah. uh, it, it does specifically say that every day uh, uh, Dromai is pouring over like tomes of the 12 dragons which i think we have mm. seen we have seen said 12 dragons in the set but she's just kind of like learning about the dragons and if you didn't know like the the, the flavor behind this is that the dragons they're not real in the sense that they're not like alive flesh and blood dragons flying around right so dromai is like conjuring them from the ash kind of the same way that prism conjures angels from light um yeah. And uh yeah, so she's like going over like these ancient tomes about the dragons and then like summons them. And that 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 does pay off in the next part of the story when they go and try to save General Riku. <laughs> um yeah. Dromai doesn't actually care about General Riku. What she actually cares about is winning favor with the emperor. Um, exactly, yeah. And so she's like yeah, I I need to go. I need to go save this dude. Um once again, they, they talk about her quote murder murderous foster mother. Okay, so this is this is something that I found very interesting. Right, they talk about her mother a few times, um, and this part makes me question if what what her mother really is. So there yeah. is um, this part where she hears about General Riku being captured, and, and then it says uh, she has not heard that name for ten years, not since Zathri came to her village, not since Riku's soldiers drove her murderous foster mother into the forest, not since Min's lies were burned away by the Drakai's truth about her real parents. Um, I don't know which one's a lie. Like, this is a situation where, like, you you don't know who's lying to who, right? Like, if, no, Dro if, if the Drakai are, like, lying to Dromai, or... Um, was, yeah. she a re was she really a murderous traitor? Or is it just something they're telling they're telling her sort of thing? Yeah, well, I definitely think their mother is like a, you know, re you know, leader of the rebellion kind of kind of thing. But yeah, um, yeah, I thought this part was was very interesting. Um, mm. So yeah, they're like, yo, if you bring back uh, Riku, uh, we'll make you a Drakai, and she's like, hell yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and yeah. So like, basically, they just they ride out um, with like. Um, they ride out with a thousand hussars at their back, so uh, a significant uh, army. And then, yeah, like, paramount. yeah, and as they as they approach, uh, Dromai starts like an incantation, and as they as they arrive, she just freaking summons Tomaltai, 
and uh, yep. uh, she put she put that research to good use and summoned like probably the coolest looking dragon out of all of them. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, Tom will tie. She's doing this. She's doing this while she's riding a horse as well. Yeah. While she rides, she um, hits the edge of the rebel encampment. Tom will lifts off from the skeleton of a burned out barn. <laughs> yeah. So she's like, yeah. So. I, the flavor here is that she summoned him from the ash of the burned out barn. So they're they're no longer. Yeah. I, I don't think they're. Are, are they in the desert? I'm not. I'm not entirely sure if they're still in the desert here, because um, it's a it's a different place than the uh, than the previous um, encampment they were fighting at. I, I think. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. It will be. Yeah. But um, so instead of summoning it from the ash of the desert. She summons it from the ash of like this burned out barn, which I think is mm. is super interesting. Yeah, um, that's quality bit of flavor. And then what? Like the Tomal Tai just absolutely wrecks face. Um, just wrecks people. Yeah. Yep. Um, she you know beelines it for the um, General Riku, who is still tied up on this uh, this post here. That we saw, mm -hmm. you know, from the the Fi story, she sees the yeah, dead man. lady too. Like she goes up and she's like, "Oh, there's a dead lady." Um, <laughs> next, next to this finely, or there's a silver-haired woman standing over a finely dressed corpse. Um, <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> and uh, so this must happen like fairly soon after the the Fi story, right? Um, must do, yeah. Freshly, unless dressed she's corpse. Yeah, unless she's just like. Hanging around the corpse the whole time, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, go Could go. Be. My daily trip to the corpse and just hang out a little bit. Just hang around, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, she encounters a um, marvelous fighter, a young man in a ragged red cloak, uh, that mm -hmm. knocks a rider from their saddle with a magnificent flying kick. Uh, it's a name drop of a flesh and blood card. Flying <laughs> flying kick. It is indeed. Um, and then drum drum. I can't tell who it is. Um, but she knows from his predatory grace that he's a man to be wary of. Um, yeah, so it's interesting that the like in this article they're referring to obviously Fi and Ewan, uh, if I've pronounced that correctly, as silver hair and the man in a ragged cloak. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so obviously they don't they don't know at this point who that who those characters are. So, uh, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, she doesn't know that Fi as well until until later on. I don't think. Yeah, I, b I believe. Um... Ewan or Silverhair gets kind of like knocked um, by Tomaltai's tail. Like she gets like, you know, whipped by his tail. And Dromai is yeah. sur like very surprised that the lady just stands up and it's not just like knocked <laughs> out. So that also means that Silverhair yeah. is like, you know, a, a formidable fighter here. Mm. Um, not not only good at torturing and killing tied up people. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, she. Um, Long long story short, uh, Fi goes and saves uh, Silverhair, and in doing so, Dromai catches a glimpse of Fi's face and realizes who he is. Um, she calls him Fi of the Forest of Flames, son of Min the Murderer. Um, right, okay. Yeah. So who's Min? So who's Min, then? Son we don't Min. know, do we? Wait, so Min... Is Min the mother? Earlier in the story... The um, Sani, wasn't it? Sani appeared and distracted her. Mm. I'm, I'm a little confused on this. Um, yeah. But um, if you if you know exactly what, what this is, please let us know in, in yeah. the comments. Because it, it does make it seem like the writing does make it seem like Sani is the name of her mother. And yeah. why, why would the sand people know to conjure that image, right? If it, if it wasn't mm -hmm. yeah. her. But then who's who's Min? Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm 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 not sure. Yeah, because because Fi, Fi Fi's parents aren't the same as Dramai's, are they? Or are they? Well, because it could be they might be half. Because yeah, because Dramai is half Drakai and half um, Sand people, isn't she? Like oh. like the bloody Tuscan Raiders off of Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I I thought they were siblings, um, but you can still have a half brother, can't you? I guess. Yeah, so they might have the same father or mother. Um, mm. They might have the same mother, and Min the murderer 
might be Fi's father. You know what I'm saying? Essentially, yeah. So like Dromai's yeah. father might be the Drakai that they mentioned earlier. But yeah. but Fi's father might be Min. Yeah. Min the murderer? That yeah. that could that could be the case. Um we we're just trying to get the the family lineage of, of Fi and Dromai. Yeah, exactly, yeah. We don't have a family tree to consult, unfortunately, people. So th- um, I think them being like half half brother and sister makes a little more sense. Um Yeah, I think so. Because he he calls she calls her she calls Fi her false sibling. Like her false sibling gallops down the hillside with a silver haired rebel slung over the neck of his horse. So Yes, yeah, so that gives you, that gives the impression that she's, you know, he is a sibling, but not full fledged sibling. Like like, you know, like a step brother well, not a step brother, like a half brother. Like, you know, it's your it's your brother, but from a different mother, I guess, or whatever. Yep. However they say it. Yep, yep. Brother from a, yeah. another mother, I guess. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um Anyway, she she lets uh, she lets him go uh, in order to save the uh, general Riku, and Riku's you know, like he's like yo thank you, and Droma's like cool I don't really care I just care about the emperor. She doesn't say that, exactly. but that's what yeah. she's thinking. Um, and I like this part from Zathri, the spy master. Uh, he sees this, he smiles, and um, he he says, "Now the emperor will see what I see in you," which. Yeah. Um, it, uh, he didn't. He didn't sound like the most supportive, you know, earlier when he called her a dirty half blood or whatever. Um, <laughs> but uh, tough, tough love, tough yeah. shoulder. Tough yeah. shoulder. <laughs> Maybe that was like motivation, right? Like, yeah, you know, he's gonna just talk. You have to Zathri's, Zathri's way of looking at Drobai and just going, hmm, hmm, lovely old job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> lovely old job. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Um, so uh, yeah, so um. She eventually the story caps off with uh, Dromai being promoted, or I don't know how you want to, you know, dubbed as a Drakai, and so that mm-hmm. that's kind of she's no longer Dromai the Half Blood, um, and uh, apparently she's thirty years old. That that's another thing that just comes out. It's, it says uh, she's right. where she belongs, where her dragon blood has burned to be for thirty years. She is Drakai. Um, which is cool. I like having like uh, not every character is like twenty four years old, um, like yeah. uh, some other like fantasy worlds you see. Like every, <laughs> every all the heroes are like you know twenty four to twenty seven. Um, yeah. Or <laughs> well, if you look at JRPGs, they're all like sixteen, just graduated from Seed in Final Fantasy VIII and stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah exactly. Um, just kids running around with gun blades. Yeah, um, I mean, even even like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, I'm pretty sure they're all like 17, like all of yeah. the characters. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, I I, I dig that uh, Flesh and Blood really has like a wide range of ages. Um, yeah, when, when it comes That's to this nice. kind of stuff. Uh, one one other just small thing that I thought was interesting, uh, I, I think it was in the Fi story where they were like they mentioned that the blood of the Drakai, not the actual, you know, not the actual. Uh, gem yeah but like burns like it, they said it like steams or it's like so hot that it steams or something like that because they're oh, really? they're descended from the dragons um yeah which i thought was just you know just interesting just like interesting lore lore thing um, yeah i mean that's uh and that's you know that gives whole meaning to the phrase sort of hot-blooded you know yeah or you know you know the, the people that are hot-headed or hot-blooded you know the people that are sort of in the faces of others and you know quite aggressive and stuff so yeah it's interesting that they've made the actual phrase uh, a thing in the law the fact that their blood is hot <laughs> yeah so yeah burns that yeah. that that is our little little recap of the the lore well the new lore the the phi and dromai lore um yeah what, what do you guys think of it yeah i think it's really cool yeah just like some of the ways that they really add flavor to the dragons and like make them feel i don't know like important characters i mean obviously yeah. they have just from a, a mechanics standpoint in the game it's like you're invoking the spirit of this dragon and making it fight for you which is mm. something that we haven't really seen all that much of in flesh and blood right now but it's like you know, uh, the description that they have for Necria and Vincerakai and then Tomaltai being this like absolute behemoth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Slaughtering armies on his own. Yeah. Yeah. It's 
a really nice way to to give you some additional like scale and context for like the the forces that Dromai can control. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, she she seems pretty strong. <laughs> Dromai seems pretty strong. Um, yeah. it, it'd be super interesting to see like Dromai go up against like Prism and have like the angels fighting the dragons or something like that. I think that could be really cool. Oh, yeah. Um. That'd be awesome. So yeah. Yeah. I, I I agree. I think it's awesome the way they characterize a lot of this stuff. Um, yeah. And the way the way they add just world building here and there, um, instead of being like you know, you know, barked like a dog, they were like he barked like a char bear, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but then it's up, and then it's up to you to 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 decide what a char bear sounds like. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. They um, they don't go into like huge descriptions of things right like how we were a little bit confused on the the characters like min and that kind of stuff they're not like you know min the traitor father of phi but not of drone like they don't like go into you know hmm. super handholdy description territory you kind of have to gleam like the information yourself which is um I don't know. I, as someone who uh, <laughs> enjoys dark, dark Souls, I guess I'm comparing this to Dark Souls. Um, yeah. Where you have to just kind of like gather the intel yourself. Um, for me, it's a, I'm a little I'm a little used to it, but um, yeah. Yeah, exactly, and it's it's good as well because um, if you look at the bottom of the each article, it then says like the story continues here, and it's got like um, obviously the article that we've just read followed by the next article which is released in uh, august so obviously for um dramai we've got the betrayal story there's a title betrayal does that go into the Ooh. betrayal that uh, her mother is perceived to have done against whatever uh, forces so is that going to explain that story a little bit more do we get the mother's name properly or we might have had it already but correct us if we're wrong but the fact that they're sort of you know, do it giving us a story now, which then leads into something else that we can look forward to in August, um, is good. And obviously, we get another bit in October, which sort of maybe sort of rounds off that story. It is good for people that do like the law and do like to follow the characters' journeys because they can they can expect the next sort of step in that um, in that journey, which is nice. It's not just like a one piece thing. It's there there as James said as well in the in the interview with Flake. They want to sort of really tie the law into the next set and stuff. So hopefully it's all part of that. Yep. I think they're setting up for like a, a fairly large story here. Um, yeah. For, for the lore buffs out there, I would say, I think gleam, gleaming the information from these two stories, um, I think Sani is the name of Phi and Dromai's mother. Um, mm-hmm. And um, Min is the name of Phi's father. And I think they said the name of Dromai's father to Torvai. Torvai is uh, mm. Dromai's father, I believe. Okay, yeah. So we, so we pretty much, yeah. We by looks of it, we did pretty much figure it out then on the pieces that they gave us. That's the that's the family tree, hopefully. Yeah, because like for, for Dromai, Zathri says you honor your father's memory, and then Dromai immediately says Torvai was betrayed by love. So directly yeah. referencing the father and then um later it says uh, no sentiment for your mother's own people and then she says the woman who left me with traitors never and then it says as as if her thought is summons sonny shimmers into existence so you know mm. therefore sonny yeah. is her mother um cool yeah so we might we might have missed it in the original summary but there it is that's the uh that's the uh the relations which is nice yeah um Cool. Yeah, so we've got a lot of things to look forward to, and obviously, hopefully, um, a lot of the a lot of the sort of draftable sets, the ones that are going to have big stories attached to them, are going to be in this same sort of vein where we get sort of drip fed stories, like after the sets come out. So it yeah. sort of sort of you know gives us more things to speculate on and look forward to still within that set, even though the set's been out for a few weeks now um you know people are still getting it of course can still be excited for what happened in that set story wise because they're still sort of expanding on it as time goes on um yep. so yeah um, i do like that format yeah and i, I like that they're, that they're tying the story into the next um uh, expansion set too so it's not just going to be like a crucible award kind of one-off thing i think it's going to mm-hmm. actually have story and flavor and lore and that kind of stuff which is which is pretty cool um yeah and um as things get slower, as we wait for the next set to come out, 
Um, mm. I think it'd be cool for us to do more lore stuff. Not exactly, uh, par- you know, paraphrasing stories like this, but like you know, diving into like regions or heroes in particular. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if if you listeners out there have any in particular that you'd like uh, us to cover, uh, please let us know. Like if you're like yo talk about metrics or something then maybe we'll do an episode where we talk about metrics on a slow news week or um yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah sounds good it's definitely a place a lot of people want to visit because there's no obviously not much mech stuff out there so it's definitely something that people want to visit so yeah definitely if you've got a um a place you want us to want us to go then we can delve into it 100 percent. but um we got a few uh community questions so uh i've got like a little mailbox in my discord uh where i say post questions for us in living legends so we've got a few questions uh that we can answer on the end of this before we go to the arsenal step if you're up for that yeah definitely yeah um so we've got a question here from dave at dg tcg question for you and the boys <laughs> lovely old lo- lovely old job i love how that's that's stuck around yeah uh, in people's me- people's memory um, do you think that LSS's policy of only allowing the product to be sold by bricks and mortar retailers that have gaming tables and obviously space indoors is restricting the growth and spread of the game? Hmm. Uh, this speaks to me quite a lot because I had an affiliate with an online retailer called The Card Vault, um, and they don't have like a bricks and mortar space. And they were told, obviously, um, recently, I think it was from... Uh, it was Blackfire or Asthma Day, the people that actually give them give them the products. I'm not so versed on logistics of distribution, but they just can't mm. get it now. They they can't get it anymore because they're not allowed to have it. Um, so obviously that was my sort of flesh and blood affiliate just shot out of the water. And a lot a lot of the community that I, I built over the last year is for people that don't have stores, and I'm one of those people. I don't have a store that has events local to me that runs them, and I've had to sort of go out and sort of you know, start doing community building um, to however successful that will be is is still yet to be proven. Um, but the fact that, you know, people can't, you know, people can't get product um, online is, yeah, is that, is that a bad thing? What do, what do we think? It's a, it's a tricky thing. Th- th- this has been their policy ever since the, ever since the start, because um, mm. before Travis from Fab Foundry formed Fab Foundry, uh, he and I were talking about it a lot. And he was going to just be an online retailer. And even then, like, it, yeah. it was difficult to to do that. They, they, they had that policy. Like, you could only um, get sealed product if you are a brick-and-mortar store. And mm-hmm. I, the reason they have that policy is because they want to support the local game store. Like, that, that's the reason why they did that. That was one of the things that, that they were doing yeah. to support the local game store. Um so it's like a tricky thing because I, I do believe in that vision, right? Supporting the local game store because oh, yeah. you know, I, I do believe that it's a very important place um, mm. and the backbone of a lot of these communities. But at the same time, I, I can also see where you're coming from as where like you just don't have a local game store. And so like the the game just is like difficult, like very difficult to get in your area, like, especially yeah. for like sealed product. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I... Um, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't have a good answer for this because I'm, like, really torn. Like, I legitimately a, 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 am torn. Because, like, yeah, it's 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 tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's, uh, there's like, I'm, I'm sort of in the same boat where there's a bit of an issue locally for, for us here in Manitoba where uh, I know I've been speaking to one of the uh, owners of one of the LGSs. Um, him and I discuss flesh and blood stuff. And he picks my brain about like, you know, in terms of tournament structure and whatever. But yeah. uh, he one of the main concerns that he has for the most part is um, the distributor here in Canada, which I believe is Prince distributors. I, I don't want to throw them under the bus or anything, but they're, okay. they're the only one that has access to uh, distribute flesh and blood in Canada. And for the past few releases, I guess they're a little bit gun shy about um, like Monarch, how Monarch happened, because apparently there was just way too much product and it didn't move. And um, then it was like, well, you know, you guys either. Um, way overestimated how much you were going to need or there isn't that much demand or whatever, like some combination of those. Yeah. So now, like, and I mean, back when Monarch was being um, distributed, 
there wasn't really uh, a, a scene here in like in Winnipeg. So mm-hmm. now that there's actually more demand and there's an actual real um, center, like for people that want to play the game and want to purchase product and stuff, they're still operating on that um, lower quantity, lower allocation um, sort of guideline yeah. that they set up back in Monarch. So, for example, I think when Everfest came out, uh, or when Everfest was going to come out, um, our LGS was taking pre-orders, and uh, they were like, oh yeah, we're going to put in for however many um, cases. And I think they had put in an order for 20 cases, and they got two. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and then they were like, yeah, we're going to give you two cases, and then you can put in another order, like, a few like I think it was either like three or four weeks after mm-hmm. that. Um, so I actually looked into because of that, I was like, well, if, if locally we're only getting this um, this amount, then, uh, you know, I buy a ton of product. And yeah. I was like, well, if I can set myself up as a retailer or whatever and help out, like I'm not trying to cut in on anybody's business, but like just no. to have more of that. And uh, so, yeah, I actually set myself up with a, a local um like small business number and tried to set up with um, the distributor. And yeah, that's when they told me that they only do brick and mortar stores. And so I was a little bit um, gutted by that. Oh. It's gotten a little bit better now. I think we're getting at least more frequent re-ups on product, but yeah, I don't know. I, I still think that the demand heavily outweighs the supply um, in, in yeah. Winnipeg, at least I'm not, I'm not sure about, I think the U.S. has a relatively easier time. I mean, the uh, uprising notwithstanding, where they had a full um, a full week delay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, that's different, though. I think. Um, yeah, I think that was extenuating circumstances for sure. Yeah, the I I can't really speak to the U.S. I I know like, you know, I have several friends who are fairly close who. Um, own and operate various types of stores, let's say. So I, I know people who own brick and mortar stores. I know people who own online only stores. Like, um, I mean, it's no surprise that, uh, you know, the gym, for example, from Fab TCG Cards, um, mm-hmm. like he's, he owns an online store, right? But not a, not a brick and mortar store. So he is unable yeah. to get um, sealed product from dis- distribution. Um, also, he's unable to sell sealed product um, online. So that's like two different things. Like you can't get it from distribution and also like selling sealed product as a store online is frowned upon if you are not yeah. a brick and mortar. Um, and then like on a little bit of opposite spectrum, um, like Travis from uh, fab foundry, he actually owns or co-owns a brick and mortar store here in Portland called discs and dice. Um, so it's, it's funny for Travis cause I know that he can get, he, he can get allocation of sealed product for discs and dice, but he can't get it for his fab foundry online store. Right. Um, right. Because one of them is an online store. One of them is a brick and mortar store and they're, they're technically separate. I think they might be yeah. doing something to, to remedy that situation, but um, it's a, it's a funny thing. Like I, I get, and I stand behind their intent with it, but I don't know if it does what they want it to do um, in that they want it, you know, the support, local game stores, brick and mortar stores. Right. Um, like I don't, I don't know. It actually helps all that much. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Um, maybe someone with a better, you know, understanding of like the market and that kind of stuff could talk about that. But, uh, <laughs> it, it feels to me like, um, if you can somehow prove that you're a legit store, um, then you know being able to sell it online it probably is not that that big of a deal because like people sell yeah. this like what's the difference between that and then like resellers just selling it on ebay or something um mm-hmm. yeah I, I don't know yeah, and just selling it for more as well potentially than what you could get from a lot of these online stores they are selling it you know a lot less than you know maybe that maybe that's the maybe that's the issue is cannibalizing business from uh actual shops that do have to put a markup on it Maybe that's yeah. Maybe that's the the, the issue. Um, but yeah, there's loads of things in there. They obviously, they, they they spoke about the fact that distribute the on the on the flake interview a while back. They sped up. They said about distribution issues and stuff, didn't they? So it's you know it's just growing pains again. Like with a lot of the stuff that's come out recently, I think. Yeah, and I, I, 
so much people want to play but can't get it. <laughs> well, I, I want to. It's a weird dichotomy too because I know like a lot of the stuff in the, the U.S. was like, like you said, for Monarch was like overprinted, and I would say that's true for Tales of Aria as well. There's like a ton of Tales of Aria. Um, right. Yeah. But uh, I do want to note that I, I very much do support the local game stores and that kind of stuff. Um, I don't yeah, want just any any rando to be able to like get product from dis- distribution and, and sell it. Um, yeah. I, I when I said like prove that you're a store, I meant like prove that you're a store that supports flesh and blood, right? Um, yeah. Because I I think that's what the the, the whole intent of this is, right? Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. It's a hard question to it's a hard question to answer because there's so many different points. But um, thank you very much for that, Dave at DG mm-hmm. TCG. Um, it could be a whole episode in itself, that whole thing that we just went through there. Um, but um, yeah, and the final question we had for this week was from Pascal, um, uh, the Swiss national champion once upon a time. Uh, and this, and he says, uh, what events do you guys plan to go to this year for FAB or any other TCG in general? Um, yeah. So halfway through the year now. So is there anything people are going to? Um, yeah, it's pretty easy. I'm going to FAB Worlds. That's like uh, yeah. 100%, uh-huh. I'm 100 percent going to that. Um, I might be doing something with a Canadian game later this year called Genesis Battle of Champions. Um, cool. Uh, maybe I'll announce something in regards to that at a later date. Um, yeah. And then I'm going to be doing. Those are the only two that I I'm physically going to be going to. Um, yeah. There's some like online ones, like events, little online events that are that I'm going to be attending in so like um for example my second youtube channel is called we cross zone um absolutely love we cross and we are currently doing the selector circuit um which is a online thing that's going on right now it's, it's doing very well it actually sold out um and oh. the idea is that uh players compete um they compete in like a um around i don't know i'm going to call it but like um you compete and you play against people for like points and then those points will determine your uh, ranking going into the actual tournament and then the actual tournament will be uh elimination and uh the top eight of that tournament uh will be partnering each person will partner with a content creator um and i'm one of the the eight content creators and then we'll do like this team top eight where like they partner with the content creator and then you know for like prizes and stuff it's gonna be a lot of fun um, Sounds cool, I, I'm looking yeah. forward to that. And then I will be doing, I, this is super half baked right now, but I, I'm going to, I want to do a grand archive, uh, launch tournament. Um, so those are my, mm. those are my, my plans. I want to do like a red zone rogue grand archive launch tournament. I have some prizes already, um, lined up. So I think it'll be really fun. So that's, that's my stuff. Cool. Nice. Unfortunately, I don't think I'll have the opportunity to go to any in-person events. Um, yeah, like my my trip to BC is kind of my my uh, t- travel budget all allocated in one go. So right. <laughs> yeah, so, and it, yeah, yeah. But I'm I'm really hoping that next year I can swing uh, some sort of in-person meetup. Mm. That'd be sweet. There are a lot of people that I have to meet at this point. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, I, I, I think I've, I think I've said previously that I'm aiming to go to the Vegas, whatever world premiere that is next year. Yeah, um, I'd be willing so, to bet there's a world premiere of the next draft set in Vegas. Yeah, so that, that's that's what I'm sort of loosely aiming for is that. But you know, obviously, the history that we've had, that's where they've been. So hopefully, we can do that. Um. That's fine. Yeah, next year, hopefully we can all meet up. That's the plan. Um, yeah. And uh, for myself, yeah, I'll be going to I'll be going to the, the the calling in Lille or the Pro Tour in Lille, but I'll be playing in the calling in Lille with Azalea. Um, and that's pretty much the only, again, uh, for sort of work purposes, holiday, getting allocated holiday, the only one I've I've got left to do. Um, so obviously Christmas is another bit of holiday that I've got. So I haven't been able to do anything else really unfortunately massive uh, so that's a, my, the, the last bit of traveling i'll be doing but there's a few there's a few interesting personalities going um pleasant kenobi vince is going um uh, flake as well is going uh, so i'm meeting up with them with them a lot over there um and uh, pascal as well the guy who asked the question is actually going to be going as well so uh, so i'll be seeing yes. him there as well um but um yeah that's that's pretty much pretty much it really nothing else for me 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I think um, uh, Miss Chalice is going to be there too. I don't know if you mentioned her. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, she'll be there. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, I'll definitely meet up with her as well. Get a selfie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, whatever she, yeah, whatever she chooses to go as. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it for today obviously there's been a variety of different topics in this uh, podcast but that's what you can come to expect from this podcast is just speaking about everything flesh and blood related whether that's community questions or pieces of law or bit, recent bits of news what we're doing and all that sort of thing so that's pretty much all we've got time for uh today um did we want to do an arsenal step or have we gone on for long enough let me check the, let me check the time <laughs> let me check the time uh we're like an hour and 15 ish minutes or so um if you got a quick oh, arsenal, right. we can we can do it. Yeah, I, mean, I had uh, I had um, this is inspired by um, by Flake. I mean, what is not inspired by Flake? Let's be honest. Um, yeah, but, he's uh, a very inspiring man. <laughs> he is in, he is indeed. Um, but um, yeah, he was he was asking for suggestions on what sort of Nintendo Switch games to get because he's he's had a Switch for ages. Um, but hasn't really utilized it. But obviously now that he's doing a lot of traveling and, you know, obviously I'm going to be doing some traveling as well. Um, I want to know what sort of Switch games to get. Uh, and so does he. So if he's listening or uh, what have you, then um, I, want to, I want to get some suggestions as to what, what Switch games we should, uh, we should get. So does anybody, anybody have any sort of experience with Switch on here? Um, yeah. I really liked Metroid Dread. Um, that was a really oh, fun yeah. one. Yeah. I've I've played I've played a few of those games in the past, like the sort of rogue like. Um, oh no, is that or is that Metroid? That is Metroid, it isn't be, it? Yeah, yeah, it would be like a Metroidvania, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, it was it was very much like a return to form. Um, they haven't yeah. really done like the two D sort of side scrolling Metroids in a while, um, mm -hmm. and yeah, I I really enjoyed it. I think I ended up one hundred percenting it, which is like maybe the first game that I've one hundred percented in the last. Wow at least five years <laughs> yeah i can't remember the last time i 100 percent a game to be um, honest <laughs> for myself as a as a gaming connoisseur a, a gamer as, as some people say uh, <laughs> i actually kind of hate that term a little bit anyway um i gotta ask you then um what kind of games do you like so i can give you a better recommendation um so yes yeah, so i love i love rpgs and okay. i think we um what what we kind of what kind of RPGs do you like? Turn based combat or do you like action combat? Uh, so turn based is 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 normally my jam. So like okay. Baldur's Gate, D Divinity sort of style things. I've I've got them already. Well, I've got Divinity already. Have you, um, have you played, played uh, Octopath Traveler? No, I have not played that. So Octopath Traveler <laughs> is a great Switch game. It's very like got this old old Final Fantasy vibe. You know, like Final Fantasy. Um, oh yeah. A six kind of vibe or or three yeah. if you want to call it in the west uh, in the u.s um so octopath mm -hmm. traveler is great um xenoblade i really like all of the xenoblade games for uh, oh yeah there's a new one as well isn't there there's a new one coming out soon or I th xenoblade I so. chronicles xenoblade yeah. chronicles 2 i think is going to be coming out um Just let's a note of these see. as we speak if you like uh roguelike card games i think everyone and their mother suggests uh slay the spire um yeah i've got that on my phone though that one um yeah, is yep. it any any different on switch or not i don't i have no idea if it's different oh, okay um yeah i don't i don't know if i think it might be pc only i was gonna i was gonna suggest vault of the void it might be pc only though um that's another really no, that game. sounds like a 1995 <laughs> pc game it's vault it's a, of the void it's a really good like uh roguelite um if you like warriors style games you know like uh um the uh, like Dynasty Warriors and that kind of stuff. Um, oh, I spent way too much time on those when I was younger. Yeah, then the new Fire Emblem one is really good. The the Fire Emblem Three Houses yeah. Dynasty Warriors type game, it's super good. Yeah. Uh, um, the Zelda Dynasty Warriors game is pretty good too. Um, Hyrule Warriors is yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't played that either. Um, Apparently, it has like frame rate issues. That's the only thing I'm re I've been reading about it is the frame rate drops because there's so many characters on screen at once. <laughs> Um, um a lot of folks suggest you... monster hunter and i i love monster hunter but oh it, god yeah it, i was gonna say monster hunter is a game that not everyone can get into like there's yeah. def <laughs> there's definitely like some hurdles yeah. you need to overcome i i love it but i've also played monster hunter for probably like over a thousand hours across like because i used to oh, have monster so, hunter yeah. on, on psp 
It was like yeah. Monster Hunt Unite, Monster Hunter United. Um, Freedom Unite, yeah. Yeah, on PSP. So I played that for a long time. Um, Same. And then I played World a little bit, and then I played Frost, the new expansion, or the newer expansion, Frostborn, and then I never finished that, but... I bet you now, right, if you picked up a PSP, uh, I'm, I'm putting Freedom Unite, the muscle memory would come back. Like, literally, oh, the, yeah. the, 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 the sort of shapes you get your hands in while playing that game is un- <laughs> is ridiculous <laughs> i had i had like the same pattern too because i used the long sword so i'd be like you know yeah the, these sequence of attacks and then do like the your 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 special attack and then always like dodge to the side so it'd be like attack 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 dodge attack 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 dodge um, yeah 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 it's good uh, good yeah. stuff i play a lot oh, of I, I, I used to use the great sword I used to love charging up and just smashing down the dragon's faces and seeing all their sort of um all their scales come off great, they, great drop the, they drop the items yeah yeah i love, I love the great sword too yo we should uh, play monster we should play monster hunter sometime <laughs> yeah we should uh, uh go we can go hunt some uh some legendary mon- legendary dragons or whatever can you even can you even play that like through the internet monster hunter yeah on, on twitch yeah yeah for sure oh you can right okay yeah, that yeah. Needs to be that, need, that needs to be researched then um <laughs> I don't. I don't mm. have the one for Switch. I just have the. I have um, Monster Hunter, um, you know, Ice Frostborn or Iceborn or whatever it's called. The one for uh, PC and like uh, PS PS4 and stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I'd be down with buying the Switch one uh, to play. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I I don't obviously we obviously going on and on about this, but hey ho, it's good fun. Um, I, I downloaded the because um, I, I used to love the uh, the old school Monster Hunters, the ones that had the loading screens. Do you remember those? Yeah, like mm. it used to be like Fre- Freedom Unite used to have obviously the loading screens, but there was a yeah. like, like the last the last the last Monster Hunter they did I think was called and this is the one I've downloaded. Uh, I think it's called Monster Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate was the one I downloaded oh, because yeah. that's the that's the last one in that sort of uh, era. And it has the largest monster roster of all of the series. So I was just like, right, if I need a time sink, I'm going to download the one that has the most monsters in it. And that was the one. So if if either of you want to download that and play, I'll be well up for it. Hey, we'll, <laughs> so we'll, have... we'll definitely talk about yeah. this. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah, because I'm down. <laughs> uh, it's, I just looked it up. My One of my favorite games of last year is getting a console release for PS4... PS5, and I think it's coming to Switch as well. It's a game called Inscription. It's a indie uh, card roguelite. I, it's more than oh, that. Yeah. It's way more than that. But but saying anything else spoils it. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's kind of a roguelite, but it's also a narrative experience. Let me put it that way. Um, mm. And I love this game. I think it's it's fantastic i think anyone who's a fan of roguelites or anyone who's a fan of card games in general is going to love this game um i, I can't yeah, give it awesome. i can't give it enough praise um like it's one of those games where you think it's over if you think it's over you're only like 30 percent of the way through like yeah <laughs> it's so good wow um it's got a 10 out of 10 on steam i'm looking at it now i i, 10 out of 10. I, I don't know how to word this any any other way like i I'm a huge fan of card games. It's like a, a, a huge portion of my life revolves around it these days. Um, mm. And I think Inscription is like top tier, like one of the best that I've ever played. So, um, yeah, cool. it's like it's like an RPG that uses a roguelike card game as a narrative device. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. What? laughs> uh, yeah. yeah like, I. Uh, also, at some point, this is going to be completely uh, removed from any context, but you do fight the moon. <laughs> yes, you do. Wow. You do fight the moon. Yeah. Um, actually, not that hard. <laughs> moon, moon is pretty easy. For, I, I slapped the moon. I beat it my first try. Anyway. Um, I, I slapped the moon, but wasn't on a game. That's what I'm saying. I, I, oh, yeah. I gotcha. Uh, <laughs> I gotcha. Um, <laughs> but no. Uh, highly recommend inscription. I also highly recommend going into it as blind as you possibly can. Because yeah. um, I did as well. I bought it like uh, like day one, um, and I was like, <clears throat> "There's a couple moments where I was just like, what? Like, yeah, it's that kind of game." Nice. So, I recommend it. Cool I, shock I, value. I think it is coming out on Switch um, mm. soon. Um, f- five days ago, 
there's a post that says it's confirmed that it's going to be ported to Switch. Um, so if it's ported to Switch by the time people travel, just just play it and buy it. It's just so, get it. Yeah. It's so good. Um, yeah. That seems to be the one then, yeah. So if that comes out... If that comes out between now and Leal, that's what I'll be getting. I, nice. Right after it came out, and no one's going to get this. This doesn't spoil anything. No one's going to get this uh, unless you've actually played through all, a significant portion of Inscription. But um, <laughs> for a couple videos after I uh, played the game, I, I threw some jokes into my own videos. And I said, uh, what did I say? Like, how's it going, Lucky Carters? I think I, think I said that. Um, <laughs> so for folks who have played Inscription and know the Lucky Carters... Thing. Lucky Carders, wow, yeah, I wouldn't have a clue what that is. Even if you were saying it, I wouldn't have a clue what it is. So it's not a spoiler at all, is it? Yeah, I, I put it <laughs> in um, at the end of the year last year. I did like my 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 favorite card games of the year, my favorite new card games of the year, and that and that one is in was in my top. I think the, the, I think Inscription was like just in my top games of last year in in general, which is saying a lot because there's some really good games last year. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, de that definitely that definitely answers the best Nintendo Switch games potentially for traveling. So uh, mm -hmm. thanks for the suggestions, uh, guys. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been a bit a bit of a wild ride today. A bit of here, there, and everywhere on this podcast. But that's what you can come to expect when Az is hosting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so uh, yeah, before we before we go, uh, if everyone wants to shout out where people can find everybody uh that would be that would be awesome uh, i'll start as the host i'm um, as from go again gaming and you can find me on go again gaming on youtube and on twitter very very active on there go again gaming az i do have an instagram as well but as kel said multiple, multiple times before it's not something really used that much but if you want to go over there it's go again gaming uk um so different tags everywhere which definitely helps the uh, the cause um <laughs> <laughs> He says, no, you, he can says read, you can read my sarcasm there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can read the sarcasm. <laughs> Even across the pond, you can still read it. Fantastic. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll throw it, over to, throw it over to Spike Feeder Bill. Yes, so I am uh, Spike Feeder Bill, Bill from the Spike Feeders. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Twitter, at uh, BillTSF. And you can also find uh, me on YouTube at Spike Feeders Fab, F-A-B. Uh, we do... Uh, live uh recorded gameplay um we do some of our blitz content which is uh more of a casual setting where um you know uh, we usually joke around a bit we also <laughs> have a cc gauntlet that's going on right now uh where it's a little bit more concise and uh, edited gameplay but still uh very good and lots of fun and awesome. uh yeah, feel free to to check us out. It's 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 very good. It's nice. <laughs> yeah, it's re awesome. recommended. Recommended. Yeah. And finally, last but not least, the the Red Zone Rogue himself. <laughs> Hello, I am the Red Zone Rogue himself. Um, you can find me at uh, youtubecom slash Rogue and twittercom slash Rogue. Um, those are the two places that I post the most. Obviously, on YouTube. Um, I also have an Instagram, like uh, as said, and I have a Facebook, but I, I hardly post to them. It, it's actually kind of easy because I have the Instagram set up. So when I post to it, then it automatically posts to my Facebook. Um, oh, and, integration. Brilliant. And, and some people follow me on those places for whatever reason, even though I barely, I barely post to them. Um, yeah. And um, I also do stuff for like Channel Fireball, all which is now going to be TCG player or something. I'm still a little confused mm -hmm. on that, but um Yep, those are the places you can find me. Mostly flesh and blood, but other stuff too. Oh wait, I have a second channel, We Cross Zone too, that I mentioned. Yeah, get that in there. If you want yeah. the, the animes, go to that. The We Cross Zone. It's growing. My <laughs> channel. Those animes. Yeah, that that channel uh, recently in the last uh, month or so hit over a thousand subs. So, um, the, right. the the game in the channel is growing. So um, if you like that stuff, go check it out. Yeah. Exactly. I remember. I remember when you first started it. It was called Red Zone Japan, wasn't it? When you first started it. Yeah, it had a little bit of an identity crisis because I was like, oh, I'll just do everything about Japan. And then I was like, yeah. you know what? I, I mostly just want to post We Cross and I really love the game and I want it to grow just like how I love mm -hmm. Flesh and Blood and I want it to grow. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to dedicate the whole channel to We Cross and then occasionally I'll post like a video about me, you know, getting anime figures or something. Um, yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, um, check it out if you like We Cross. I have a lot of fun stuff planned um, for there. So mm -hmm. yeah. Epic.
Cool. Uh, that's pretty much all we've got time for today. So thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in wherever you might be out there in the big wide world. Thank you very much for tuning into Living Legends and spending your time with us yet again. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much it for this week. And, uh, yeah, have a lovely rest of your week, people. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Yeah, have a good one.